Hi, this is Anthony. Welcome back to my show. As I jump right into this hopefully short video, of course, if you haven't already, hit the relevant buttons, and I hope that you've subscribed by now. So a couple days ago, I did a very lengthy look at two concepts in the whole Aftermath Foundation fiasco. The concept of optics, in particular, the optics of having married couples on the board. I argue just because the optics don't look good, and while I believe that the bylaws should be changed to prohibit related parties from serving concurrently on the board, that there is nothing unethical, immoral, or illegal about them being on the board. Nobody had any problem with them being on the board previous to this, and Aaron has stated that this was not a problem. Many of you still believe that just because the people were married to each other, that they colluded with each other to get rid of Aaron. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter that people were married or not. The board would still have gotten rid of Aaron. And we don't have to agree on whether Aaron actually broke something in the bylaws that justified his removal from the board. That horse is out of the barn. But I reiterate to you, if you're still fixed on this issue that you think that it was because the couples were married, and you had in the end three married couples on the board, that that is what caused them to get rid of Aaron. I would encourage you to continue trying to open your mind. I honestly don't think that I'm going to change too many minds on this subject now. But let me give you a scenario. Let us say that you've been wrongly accused of some type of crime where there seems to be circumstantial but no hard evidence. A lot of coincidental things that make you look guilty, but you're not. Maybe there's a grainy video of somebody that looks kind of like it could have been you, but it's not really clear. Maybe there's other things that could look kind of suspicious, but there's no DNA, there's no fingerprints, there's no cell phone ping that puts you within 20 feet of the actual crime. And you go before a jury, and again, in this scenario, we're going to say that you're truly innocent of this crime. Let's even say that there was a witness, and this is an instance where mistaken identity, where they identify you as the culprit, where again, it wasn't you. Do you want the members of the jury to listen to the prosecutor who speaks first and who is prosecuting you and think to themselves, yep, that person's guilty. I don't need to listen to the other side. I don't need to try to put myself in the shoes to see if it was really someone else or I didn't have a motive for the crime. How would you feel? After all, the optics to an outsider are that you're guilty and so why keep an open mind when the optics are so clear to the jury on, on your guilt anyway while i agree with you guys that the bylaws should be changed there is nothing in that situation that would have been different if there would have not been three married couples on the board end of story and we're not going to all agree on that nor does it matter because we're not on the board anyway Let's move on to the other topic that I talked about. The other topic was this concept of victimhood. Aaron has said that in the chain of bad decisions that he was a victim. I look at those instances that he himself has brought up during his interview with Rabbit, and I point out some cases like the Cigar Lounge case, where he gets punched by Sky Daly's boyfriend, where he claims that he was a victim of assault. Aaron does. But this came after Aaron was drunk and loudly talking to another man at the bar about the woman in question in a verbally inappropriate way that evidently she and her boyfriend could hear down at the end of the bar. And there had been a previous incident involving Aaron and her, which I believe was an innocent and honest mistake, but one that she thought he was potentially stalking her about a year before. So in the woman's mind, based on that misunderstanding about him stalking her about a year before, she felt like a victim. And certainly one could argue that she was a victim of some type of harassment at the bar based on what Aaron was saying to the person he was talking to, not aware that the woman and her boyfriend could hear it. And then of course, after Aaron got punched by the woman's boyfriend, Aaron followed her and call outside and called her a bad word, which may be understandable, but he was also running for city council at that point. Not good behavior, and he himself put himself in the situation where I agree to a degree he was a victim, 
but so was someone else first. And by the way, the woman in question is now Hulk Hogan's wife, but Hulk Hogan wasn't the boyfriend at the time. In the Los Angeles case, I believe what he said. I don't see any holes in his narrative, and I think that he was entirely the victim. Although, again, he put himself in a highly risky situation for somebody who is nominally married and is trying to hide the fact that he, with the consensus of his wife, is living a bachelor lifestyle that he wants to hide from the general public. When he's under the microscope of Scientology, who is trying to embarrass him and attack the foundation that he was a member of. While it now turns out that at least some members of the foundation were aware of some of his escalating bad behavior, again, I don't believe that Aaron is responsible for anything that the woman said that he did to her. I don't believe that at all. So, you could argue he was a victim here but a victim who was solely responsible for putting himself into what could have been a risky situation, which turned into something that could easily have caused him to either end up in the hospital or in jail or in the morgue because, as he pointed out, she told him that she wanted to terminate his life. And there is some people who disagree with me, and I understand. And again, you might agree with me that he might be playing the victim card a little too much here, but still disagree with me on whether the board was appropriate in removing him for these and other things. So I've tried to be cautious in some of the narrative here because unfortunately the first big bombshell of today's video is that for some reason, based on the content or words that I used in my last video, that video got demonetized. And while it got a lot of views, I didn't get compensated for any of those efforts, which is fine because I think that based on some of the feedback that I got, it changed some people's minds. And personally, I think if I can help people come to better decision making, then I've achieved something. I've moved the needle in the right direction to improve the world at least a little bit more. The second big bombshell is I finally figured out how to make surveys on YouTube using their fairly simple poll creator. My first one is called Sympathy for the Devil Has Mike Rinder Redeemed Himself. And despite me having a hard time just finding it on my own account, over 100 people so far have seen it. And as you can see, it's about 25 to 75%. I'll leave it up for a while. If you haven't seen it, look for it. It might be under the Community tab when you look at my homepage. I'm going to end up here and try to get this uploaded soon, maybe work on some other videos today. I really do appreciate everyone's comments. Some of them are heartwarming and some of them are just snarky. I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes when I get caustic statements from somebody, it's hard not to try to just zing it back in their face. I'm human and that's a natural reaction. But there's been a couple people that have sent pretty negative comments to me accusing me of arrogance or they don't like the tone of my voice. And I responded to them with a sincere message. And we, in one case, ended up having a very nice positive back and forth with one another. And the other one, we didn't have as many comments back and forth, but I still changed their mind. And in my mind... That's what my channel is about doing, trying to bring people to a better understanding of the world when some of these things are kind of complicated to look at and there's some issues that aren't readily apparent to people. I know that there is a lot of trolls out there and I know that no matter what, some people will complain or leave negative comments, but sometimes people just get off on the wrong foot in the morning. Sometimes they may not listen to everything I have to say, and they may make a quick judgment that clouds the rest of what they listen to, or they may just be having a bad day. If we're interested in the former Scientology world, it's because we want the people that are in it and that have left the church to have a better future and to have a more positive future and that's what the Aftermath Foundation wants. And that's what Aaron in his future foundation will want. Let's just try to proceed in life with the most positive attitude that we can all muster. Thanks for watching my video. Check out my other ones if you haven't already. I hope you've subscribed and hit that like button. Even if you don't like this video, every like is a strike against Scientology. Thanks so much.